to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of masculine spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. And soup up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now, here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Uh, yesterday, Cindy and I went out and paddled in really tiny waves and we tandem surfed together. Uh, it was so, it's so interesting how, how difficult it is to, to surf uh, on a, about a foot and a half big wave. Uh, eight to ten foot is a perfect face for tandem surfing. If, for those of you who don't know what that is, we paddle into a wave and then she does these extreme lifts uh, over my head while we surf. And it's very hard to do in tiny surf. Uh, but we went out and did it. And it was beautiful. It was romantic. And a lot of times, you know, when you go, when you uh, spend time and pray with the Lord, you don't feel any power or any, any sort of, uh, uh, of um, grace for the Lord. You know, that beautiful consolation that he gives sometimes. But paddle out anyway. We looked and go, oh, there's hardly any ways. But we paddle out and sure enough, there was enough surf for, for us to go out and express our love for each other in that beautiful time out in the water. So if you don't feel like it, if you don't think there's any surf, pray anyway. I mean, I, I'm such a spiritual guy. One time I was contemplating this concept. And I thought, you know what? I see these tourists out here. I used to do a really horrible thing. I, I do about a three-mile beach walk every day, do about a four-mile surf every day. But when I walk along the beach, I used to take pictures of the most red-burned uh, tourist in Waikiki and post it on Facebook, which is really evil. But, you know, people who are laying out in the sun, they don't even know they're getting a suntan or a sunburn. Um and especially they'll get the burnt the most when it's kind of a cloudy day. Uh, the, the, the ultraviolet rays still come through and scorch them. And I say, yeah, that's like our prayer life. A lot of times when we're with the Lord or meditating on his word or, or studying, we may not feel that the Holy Spirit is changing us, but you're getting a spiritual suntan. Uh, when you sit before the Eucharist especially, you are getting a spiritual uh, a suntan. I thought, I am so smart to come up with this analogy. And then I was reading St. Augustine, and he somehow he came up with it first, but... Such a great analogy. Uh, but we have with uh, us today a special guest. When I heard about him, I thought, oh my gosh, we need to talk about him. This is a man whose basic fame in life uh, goes back to his senior year in high school. He's kind of the Al Bundy of the basketball world. Uh, it was the opening game of the season, and the crowd is going crazy, and uh, the shot clock is winding down on the... Uh, well, let me just let, ask him to tell you the story. You took this amazing shot from over <laughs> 55 feet. Uh, can you explain what, how that developed and what, what, what the amazement of the crowd and your coach were uh, at that time? We're, we're talking with our guest, Mark Hartfield. He is with, of course, our beautiful, we love Paradisus Dei, Dei the, uh, the, the That Manage You program. He's the vice president of development. Can you, you know, I, I don't, you can take the whole show if you want to because what you, <laughs> Just just describe this amazing moment in basketball history. Yeah, so it's the first game of the season, like you said. It's our home opener, right? Yeah. Uh, it's right before halftime. The other team has the ball. So all my friends, all the fans are cheering. They're counting down. Uh, but what they're doing is they're trying to trick the other team into shooting before the shot clock goes off. I'm guarding the point guard. He's coming up the court. He's about a three-point line. And he crosses over to go, and I kind of, they call it picking his pocket. I kind of steal it from him. And so it's just me and the open court all the way to the basket. But my fans were counting down five, four, three. That's when the steal happened. Two, one. So I get the ball, and I just heave it up from about no, 55 feet. No, wait a minute. Let me, let me do just picture this for everybody. I can hear the sound <laughs> of, the, of, the, of, the, of the tennis shoes squeaking on the court. Um, the crowd is, is going wild. You're a senior. You're a leader on the team. That's right. This is your year to shine. And you turn – and this ball just floats just, endlessly. It's just beautiful flying through the air. And did, time, did time slow down? Was there like a it, moment of stillness? Yeah, yes. Did, yes. Suddenly the crowd goes quiet. <laughs> and then tell quiet. us. Tell and us. The, and, and then um, I probably missed the basket by 10 feet. <laughs> Ten feet. <laughs> it's a moment. And then the ball, the crowd stopped, right? Because in the air, they realized what they had done. As well. Yeah, they fooled you too, not it just the other team. Yeah. I was bouncing out of bounds. And I turned and I looked at my coach 
and he's standing on the sideline, and we both just started laughing. We started cracking up laughing. We were, we won the game. We were winning. We were playing really well. Uh, but airballed it. It was it was classic. It's going down in history, man. You know, for, to share, you know, we might as well just turn off this radio show right now. I mean, <laughs> that, that's enough uh, of an inspiration uh, to last a lifetime for most that's of us. So you airballed it from 55 feet, but you missed by 10 feet, man. I could see yeah, it. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Yeah. It, was, it was bang, bang, real quick. That should have been, uh, they yeah. should have given that's you a 10 points season. if you'd made that. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we're talking with Mark, and we also want to congratulate Mark because he's probably the first person we've ever... Uh, gotten on our TV show because you know we are, it's a radio show millions of people listen to it on EWTN and every kind of podcast app you can imagine but if you go to our uh, Bear Wozniak YouTube channel you can watch all of our radio shows with all of our great guests but it's kind of technically a little bit uh, touchy sometimes to get a Skype video uh, coordinated just fine and not only did we our connection go well but he's got this really cool backdrop it it <laughs> actually looks like you belong on Fox News or something, not 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 the Bear Wozniak <laughs> adventure, but um, yeah, we Thank got you. Mark here, and and Mark, you know, give us a little bit of background. I mean, uh, that was a highlight of your life. It was your Al Bundy moment, <laughs> but it kind of all went downhill from there. But talk to us a little bit about uh, just your background as a Catholic and how your faith uh, developed. Absolutely, uh, I grew up Catholic. My mom was pretty devout. Uh, my dad was supportive, um, but you know, really honestly, and when I got into high school and sports kind of took over. Um, and I was successful at sports. I started on varsity for three years. Uh, we were a big time 5A Texas school. All Texas. That Where was this? Uh, a Leaf Elsick is the high school I went to. Um, kind of our claim to fame at that high school was Richard Lewis went straight from high school to the NBA. He was no one of my kidding. He was one of my teammates. So even my sophomore year, it's like the news is there every game. NBA coaches are there. Well, you uh, look like a point guard. I mean, you look like a con- <laughs> what a point guard should look like. But what, what town is this? Uh, it's in Houston. It's, in, it's Houston. in Houston, and it's in the nation of Texas. In the nation of Texas. It's a great nation. <laughs> so, um, but I just fell into everything of the world, right? Without getting into all the details, it's just, you know, uh, my life was caught up in, you know, where's the party at this weekend? Um, you know, Hey, dude, dude, the party's wherever I, wherever I <laughs> was. That's right. No, actually, it was quite the opposite. My experience was like, I had this experience in high school, like, you know what? I was in social studies class. It was the most boring moment of my life, and I had this sudden feeling that someday I could be a father. And from that day forward, wow. uh, no more. I wasn't interested in parties or anything. I was just interested in studying, getting a good job, and raising a family. And that's in high school. But yeah, that's, so so. Yeah, but, that's awesome. But Mark had to go down that deep, horrible so. path. No, but tell tell us. So you were in high school, and right, it's so, you're just having so, um, the time of your life, and. That's right. And, you know, and I thought it was good at the time. I, I liked my life, so to speak. And it was between high school and college. I was going to go play college basketball. And I was a, it was a summer night, nothing out of the ordinary, similar to your moment where it was just boom. I was actually just taking a shower one summer night. I wasn't in prayer. Um, no major events happening in life um, that would have caused this. And it was the only way I could describe what happened is, uh, just that the Holy Spirit came into the room, um, and I felt the Holy, the presence of the Holy Spirit in a new way. You know, and people tell you your whole life, or my mom told me my whole life, things like, God loves you. You know what I mean? She told us all the time, God loves you. But it wasn't until that moment, and I, I think I would have told you I love God. I definitely would have told you that. I think I would have even told you before then that God's the most important in my life, but I wasn't, like, my lifestyle didn't reflect that, right? So at this moment, when I felt the Holy Spirit come into the room and come into my heart, it was all the things that we know about the faith, but they all became personal. So it's like, yes, Jesus died for me. Well, in that moment, I really felt the gravity of that truth. Praise so, God. Uh, yeah, it's just like the sins racing through my head. I fell on my knees and cried. I just wept for like 15 minutes or so. I don't know how long it was. Um, but it was one of those things that wasn't, it wasn't just a weeping of sorrow. I definitely felt sorrow and contrition for sure, but it was more joyful. It was like a, the joy of receiving well, the let mercy. Me, yeah, let me ask you this question. It yeah. wasn't so much an emotional experience as an infusion of God's love. It's a totally different thing mm-hmm. when it's, you can gin up emotionalism, Yep. but when the Holy Spirit has that cosmic moment with you, 
it, it, it you get swept away. And, and that's exactly what it was. And you think about emotions, emotions are fleeting. I can go back to this moment and say, this was the day my life changed forever. Mm. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, mm. I, I often think about like when Christ came into the world, uh, 2019 years ago, yeah. that literally the whole world, we changed how we measure time. Based on his, by uh, yeah. When, yeah, so it was yeah. before Christ and now after Christ, we measure time differently. And I would say, without even thinking about that, that's how I talk about my life. Let's, let's do it. Let, post-conversion. Let's talk Everything about that. that. We got to take a yeah. quick, you, you believe it's already 10 minutes and 30 seconds is gone? I can't believe it. I mean, I, I'm yeah. sitting here, I'm hearing people count down the clock. Oh, wow. Uh, the voice in the crowd, 10. I'm going to put up a three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I missed it. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll be right back. We're talking with Mark Hart Hartfield. He is vice president of uh, development for that man is you program, which we just love so much. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak adventure. All right. Small, small, small little. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak adventure. Thank you. Thanking our great sponsors, Solidarity HealthShare and Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for their supporting our show. And we want to invite the men to uh, go to our website, or women, you can do this too, sneakily go to our website, deepadventure.com, and subscribe your husband to become a member of our secret Facebook group, Bears Man Cave. You can go there. You can kind of see it on, on Facebook, but you can't join there. You have to go to our website because we screen uh, members of the Facebook group. Um, but you go there and to our website, deepadventure.com, and subscribe and go to, and we make you a member of Bears Man Cave. We, uh, it's, just, it's just men, regular old Neanderthals, knuckle draggers, who want to go deeper with God, and we challenge each other, equip each other, mobilize each other, um, share what's going on in our lives, pray for each other. And then every two or three weeks, we have a Zoom video chat meetup where the men get to look at each other's ugly faces, and we study my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, and we model for the men how to start their own uh, men's group in their church. Um, sometimes it can be the That Man Is You program, which we're big supporters of. Sometimes it's not, you're a man who, you know your friends don't really feel comfortable in the church. Uh, it may just be having some of our, having a shot of whiskey on your back deck with a, a few buddies and um, having smoking one of our Bears Man Cave uh, Seven Virtue Cigars and uh, reading from my book in a more un non-threatening way as a lead-in to programs like That Man Is You. Uh, we're fortunate to have as our guest today, Mark Hartfield, the Vice President of Development for That Man Is You. Mark, you know, we started the um, That Man Is You program here in Honolulu. The bishop loved the concept, uh, gee, I think back in 2013 or something like that. And I remember I went to my first big men's conference in, in Orlando, and I'm like, I'm flowing out there just to go to this event and I'm like, what is going on here? These men are using their their gifts. They, they're not, one person is is a professional in this area. One person does this, but whatever area of success they had in their life, somehow they found a way to apply that in their apostolate. And I go, where did all these men come from? And uh, they go, well, they're, that man is you program. And wow. you know, I was just shocked. It was especially, you know, I walked in with a friend of mine who had a radio show there in, in uh, the Tampa area. And when they greeted me, they go, hey, it's so good to see you, Jamie. Hey, you can, you know, you can go over here and have some bagels or whatever. And, and then he would introduce me and they go, oh, so good to meet you. You can go over here and go to confession over here. So I don't know what they saw in me at the moment. But but uh, <laughs> but anyway, um, we love that man as you and we're so glad to have you back. But you were, the, you were sharing with us this uh, incredible infusion, uh, indescribable St. Augustine kind of moment when the Holy Spirit flooded your heart. And we'd like for you to kind of continue with that. Yep. So that moment uh, changed the trajectory of my life. And um, it would lead me eventually to where I went to Franciscan University. Oh, uh, you did? I did. Oh. I did. So I yeah. uh, got a theology degree there, was discerning vocation, found my vocation there. My wife, uh, who she had also gone. So we were in first theology class together and met. No kidding. The class was so what was, what was your favorite class there that you took? Oh, man. Uh, Mariology was one of my favorites. So it was Dr. Mark Maravalli was awesome. 
uh, I had a class with Dr. Regis Martin called Grace and the Virtues. That wow. was just, just a beautiful. Oh, a, my God. What class? A master's level class. I had Scott Hahn for principles. No, of you didn't. Too, no, you for didn't. New Testament. Oh my uh, God. And the, the list goes on and on. The professors there, Father Dan Petit is fantastic. Um, all the professors are really great. So it's hard to say a favorite, um, but I tried to get a variety um, and really, um, I love seeing what makes people tick and like the difference of, of the professors. Um, and in my mind, uh, it's its own little proof of God's existence of how much he speaks to the human heart individually. In so many different ways. Uh, in so many different ways. And so I loved the professors. Anyway, well, you know, um, I would like to tell, tell you, I've, I have been pursuing my master's degree through their online program. Okay. Uh, but I had to suspend it about a year and a half ago because ministry is just overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. I, I mean, yeah. it, it's, things are spilling over. But oh, do I love those. So, those of yeah. you who may not be able to go to this incredible, how can you describe Steubenville? It is like uh, oh my gosh. the grace. It is, like, I would say, it's like the Garden of Eden uh, of. of, of <laughs> Well, wait, wait, maybe I overstated it. <laughs> well, I've heard it said that it's the armpit of the United States. So from a, from a purely, from a purely uh, what do you do in Steubenville, the town itself, it's an old steel mill town Yeah. Uh, that doesn't get a lot of sun. That little beautiful uh, river that flows through it. but Yeah, it's run down, a lot of pollution. The only thing going but on there is Steubenville University. That's it. That's yeah. it. And it keeps it, it keeps the purity of it. because It's like living, being at a monastery. Go there. Right. Who wants to go there from? And so what you find out, uh, the student body makes it amazing. Like typically your first conversation, your first like real in-depth conversation is more or less along of like, what's your story? How'd you get here? And awesome. It, it's, it's a Christian story. Like what's your conversion story or what's your family or whatever. So it's a great place. Um, so my wife and I, she, you know, she got out, she wanted to do youth ministry also. So she did youth ministry. We came back to Houston I got the job uh, with Steve Bowman. Uh, it was just starting that man as you. Um, she got a job at the same parish as the youth minister, uh, which is just crazy. So as God would have it, we were able to, like our first several years of marriage, we were able to get in the car, go to A15 morning mass at St. Cecilia's. She would walk to the youth room. I would walk to Steve's house down the street. <laughs> uh, I worked out of a spare bedroom out of his house for the first there six There you go, years yeah. Of thing um and then i walk back over and we'd have lunch together i'd walk back to steve's house and i'd walk back and be with the youth group kids um and you know playing ping pong in the youth room and doing bible studies so it was really god ordained a really amazing situation um and that's well, that's kind of how it started for me with with that man as you god has a plan for our lives and when mm -hmm. we abandon ourselves to god's will we always say it's the most radical thing you can do it's the greatest adventure yeah. Uh, but when you abandon yourself to God's will, you um, you um, don't become less of who you are. People are afraid they're always going to make me be something I'm not. You suddenly have life. The gifts that he, you have in you kind of get the electricity or the power to light up. It's like right. plugging in a Christmas tree. You become more of who you are. And I, before we go to this next segment, I want to I want to encourage people. Wouldn't it be great if 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 a dozen people right now who listen to us would go online to Franciscan University of Steubenville and seek out beginning their master's degree online. Wouldn't that be a great experience if they, if they did that as a result of our conversation? So we encourage you guys to do that. But now, so, so you're, you're with TMIY almost from the beginning of your career. Right. And from its beginning. So I'm sure you yeah. and I, I, I think I remember actually talking to you. I do remember years it. Years ago, yeah. And I uh, it. So, so put your finger on this why uh, what, what is the, what is the, what do you see is that, you know, in our work, we don't talk about masculine virtue or masculine spirituality. We talk about manly virtue and manly spirituality because there's so many genders according to the world now. And we just get down to that horrible world called manliness. Mm. What is it? Uh, why, why, what is, what is that manage you all about? And what, what is the, the need that you see? And what do you see for what Holy Spirit is doing right now? Right. Uh, certainly, I think we live in a culture um, that's lacking authentic male leadership. And so from the very start of TMIY, we address that issue. Uh, we don't go around it. We kind of from session one and two, it's like kind of a shock and awe campaign about our, our whole society is suffering from failed male leadership. And a lot of times it's from men who think they're leaders in society, who society would look to as leaders. Uh, we tell a story from the get-go about 
you know, a group of men who think they're leaders and they end up two and a half out of 10 on the 10 commandments where they're failing every one of them. And so we ask that question, have we failed ourselves? Have we failed our families? Have we failed society? And then we try to put, you know, a pathway in place for these men to get it. One that, gosh, as the, as the family goes, so goes the church and so goes society. Um, so we put that vision before them. Um, and the fact that we, um, we build community around it too. So a lot of these guys, they, they, they're used to coming into their, like a men's program at their church and thinking of it as maybe eight to 10 guys sitting around in a small group, um, which is a wonderful thing in itself, but that's what they're thinking it may be. Uh, but they come in and there's this large group of men and men are seeking community and fellowship. Most guys go to mass. They don't know the, the man standing next to them in the pew um, and this just breaks down all of those things. So it meets them with the fellowship. It gives them a rich um, Catholic content, but it also brings in um, issues that are going, real issues that are going on in the world that they can relate to um, and brings that all together in a way that I think gives them a new vision that they didn't know was out there. We're talking um, with so Mark Hartfield. He's the vice president of development of the That Man Is You program, paradisusdei.org. Uh, we're going to spell it P-A-R-A-D-I-S-U-S-D-E-I.org. Uh, and we're going to talk, we're going to be right back. We're going to talk more about how you can get uh, That Man Is You program started at your local parish. If you're a man and you don't have a men's group at your local church, it's your fault. We'll be right back with the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha and welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to remind everybody that this incredible, un incredibly unique TV show on EWTN, The Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, uh, is playing again on EWTN. Season one is 10 episodes long. Season two will be delivered to EWTN any day now, and I believe we'll follow on, the, on, on that, uh, the showing of season one. You'll be able to see season two right away. We've actually shot... Uh, four more seasons of Long Ride Home, and we're working on editing it now. Very gruesome process when you're doing a reality-type show with tons of GoPro cameras, cameras. Every day we do about a quarter of a terabyte of data. So it's a, it's a gruesome amount of work, but so well worth it. So unique to have men riding motorcycles across the United States uh, facing tremendous adversities. Episode 1 of Season 1, we're, we're riding through a hurricane. Not a rain, not not rain, more like a waterfall hitting us. So you see men having a common goal, facing adversity, forging relationships, all the fake facade stuff falling down, and the men getting real and pursuing deeper walk with God and and pursuing um, a life of virtue. Earlier today, I was down on the beach here in Waikiki. Oh, and by the way, I should say that our reality show, season one, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, is available on iTunes, it's available on Prime Video, it's available on Google Play. There's only one other EWTN show that is like that. That's Christopher Stefanik's show. Uh, I think it's called Real Catholic. It's also been showed on the Armed Forces Network. So it's a really gritty, cool show. So go there. I was down on the beach in Waikiki today, every morning at 7.30, wherever I happen to be in the, in the world, which is usually on a beach, I do the Ocean Sunrise Catechism. We read through the entire catechism. Uh, right now, we're deep into our third year, and we're about two-thirds of the way through the catechism. We read, and then I share about it, but we actually love the catechism. And today, I went over to uh, the beach and stood by a banyan tree. This banyan tree, it must be, if you were to put a tape measure around it, it would be 50, I don't even know how to, it must be at least 80 feet diameter. Uh, because a banyan tree is very unique. A banyan tree grows up, begins to spread out, and then vines trail down. And kids come and swing on those vines, but eventually that vine will become a root. And then that vine will grow thicker and thicker and thicker till it really looks like a tree uh, trunk, and it supports that branch so that branch can go out further. And then another vine comes down, and then it seeks into the soil, then it goes deep, and then it supports... Uh, that branch so we can grow further. 
Uh, the one in Maui is basically a one tree takes up a whole city block just about. That's what the That Man Is You program is about, where we have a common root in the church. As the branches go out, uh, the, roots, uh, the roots start going deeper in other men, and each man and his family become another, uh, found another uh, almost trunk of that tree to support the branches so it continue to spread out. We can't do this alone. We need to uh, go deep with the Lord, and we need to uh, be all connected to one magisterium, one church, uh, and become a place where people can seek shade. The mina birds in the morning about an hour before sunrise go crazy, and just about sunset, the hundreds of mina birds in there go crazy, and just a, just a beautiful uh, a beautiful image, I think, of the, of the church and, and, and men gathering together. We're talking with Mark Hartfield. He is uh, one of the Probably one of the greatest, took one of the greatest basketball shots of all time. Uh, <laughs> anyone in our show, anyway, he took a 55-foot shot as the buzzer was about to buzz uh, as a senior in high school. Unfortunately, he missed it, but um, still better than when I shot at the wrong basket when I was playing in junior high school. But we got Mark Hartfield here. He has been with that man as you almost from its genesis, and so we're so grateful. Can you tell us, Mark, I, I was challenged, man, if you don't have a men's group in your parish, it's your fault. You know, you only need a, a two or three men, and then you get a you get a, a get get more men involved. But it takes that nucleus of two or three men, and right. but the thing about that man is you is it is so you 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 give them a turnkey approach to doing this. You've done it before. And you don't need to reinvent the wheel. If I call and I did this, I called and I talked to you probably seven years ago here in Hawaii, and we started a, that man is you program in a few parishes here. Tell me what the step is. If there's a man listening today and go, man, I wish I had fellowship with other brothers, but he, yeah, yeah I mean, how does he exactly get one started? Right. You're exactly right. And it, it comes down to one or two men. It, it's, a, it's leadership. As we talked about in the last segment, you know, the issues we're facing in our society are, are because of failed male leadership. The opposite is also true. It just takes one guy or two guys to really step up and say, I want to do this. And when those one or two men say that, they will get a following. Like other men will see what they're doing and they will jump on and then you'll have your core team. Let's look at it this uh, way. I'm going to tell you guys right now, you men out there that are, someone's listening right now and goes, yeah, it would be a good idea. I don't think I can do it. If you're feeling any nudge at all right now by what we're saying, believe me, the Holy Spirit's all over you. It's not up to you. You just take the steps and watch what the Holy Spirit does. You're going to be swept up in a, in a tidal wave of God's power, and he, he will bring the people. Sorry, Mark, I just had to interject yeah. that. Yeah, you got it. And, and as Bear said, it is a turnkey program. So I think that's uh, one of the factors that's made it uh, work so well is it just takes a layman. It, you, you don't need all this other stuff, just pastor approval, but we give you everything you need. Describe uh, that. Describe that. Describe it, yeah. the ABCs of it. Yeah, so you get a, a program in a box. You get all the DVD contents. It's a 26-week program, 13 weeks in the fall, 13 weeks in the spring. Uh, we give you an outline, a core team leader guide with training videos that teach you, one, how to uh, recruit men to come, how to keep them coming back. You know, if you think about it from the most simplistic uh, view, there's, you have two steps as a core team. Get men to come, keep Get them coming back. Keep them to stay. And, and it's all... Uh, based on personal invite and then personal touch when they're there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel on the content. It's all done for you. So you're building a core team, going out and recruiting men. The men make the program. That's what makes the program. So you got to go get them. Uh, and we teach you how to do that with a triad and true plan. And every year, you wouldn't believe everyone comes back to us always saying, ah, you know, we're only going to get 20 guys. Ah, we're nervous. And then they get 50, 60, 100, 150 men. Um, when this very first started at St. Cecilia at our home parish, you know, Steve Bowman started it. He went around asking, how, you know, how many people do you think are going to show up? Everybody on staff on staff said no one's going to show up. And then finally, the last the parochial vicar, he's like, come on, Father. Everyone said no one's going to show up. He's like, ah, t- 10 guys will show up. He's like, I got 12 on the core team. <laughs> the mm-hmm. first week, 124 men walked through the door. And I'm telling you, it's electrifying. Uh, the thing about it, too, is you, got, you also have – as I recall, uh, electronic follow-up. I mean, there's a there's email. Oh, yeah. uh, all set up. It's just automatic yeah, campaign goes system. out to everybody. It's just e- you even up. have it set up like you need these. This is what you need to do. You need to have the guy in charge of getting there early and setting right. up. You need the guy in charge of donuts and coffee. Right. And right. and I love it because most TMIY programs are at seven in the morning on a Saturday morning, 
or someplace. It's, it's every day of the week. So uh, yeah. most of them actually fall during a weekday, but we also oh, do a, a so but is six, it, is, 7.30. You can do Saturday it, morning. But is it usually well. in the morning, isn't it, or is it at night? Yeah, absolutely. It's typically in the morning because we're so big on marriage and family yeah. that yeah. Uh, if you like the program, that's a time you can – you know, lose an hour of sleep and still come. Yeah, and I love it because it causes each man to have to man up just to get up early choice. and make make it there. Right. And so, yeah, everything's provided. Uh, we give you a database where you can sign up your guys online, and then the, the local team uh, manages that list, keeps in touch with their men. We have templated emails. I mean, everything is done. And we also provide um, on our staff a program coordinator, so that every core team leader is going to have a personal contact here at Paradisus Day. And those people's full-time job is to support your core team. And that's what um, you did for us when we started in Hawaii, was you, Mark, that kind of carried did. the ball back yep. in those days. Yeah, That's right. Yep, That's what I did from the beginning. Um, and so that we've built that out. We have five, six program coordinators now that you know manage all over the world, really. And so we've we've grown from one parish to this year we we're in close to 700 parishes running actively running that man as you. So and also you, know, you have the first year, but you have curriculum now for how many years out? Right now there's four years on the shelf, so to speak, and I'm currently uh, working on year five. So, uh, but you, you can, can go. But this is something you can go back over. You can loop around oh, and sure. loop around. Yeah, it's not like because it's an evergreen type of. Jesus is an evergreen. The Catholicism is evergreen. It doesn't have its right. uh, its shelf life. It's this great truth. We're talking with Mark Hartfield. He is the uh, vice president, as my dad used to say, the president in charge of vice. At that man is <laughs> you. When we get right back, um, real real briefly, why you got thirty seconds? Why is it called yeah. that man is you? That man is you is from King David. Uh, King David slept with Bathsheba, and then also uh, added accomplice to murder, to adultery, and God sent the prophet Nathan to him, said, King, judge this case. You have a poor man and a rich man. The rich man stole the poor man's ewe lamb and slaughtered it for his guests. King David rises up in fury and says, as the Lord lives, that man should die. Nathan says, King, that man is you. So It's, it's the story of King David. It's, a, it's an accusation, if you will, but it doesn't end with an accusation that King David fell and fell bad. And at the same time, King David repented and he became the only man in scripture in the book of Acts to become a man after God's own heart. Amen. So we got that man is you and the tagline is becoming a man after God's own heart that we've all fallen in an analogous manner of King David. God has mercy for us and redemption for us. Awesome. We're talking with Mark Hartfield. He is the vice president of ParadisusDay.org, the That Man Is You program. We'll be right back with a Bear Wozniak adventure. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure. I just love my life. Uh, I get to interview people like Mark Hartfield from the That Man Is You program. I get to ride motorcycles across the United States uh, filming for EWTN. Um, I just love my life. And Cindy and I were talking about this. We're, we do about a mile walk and have a little coffee or breakfast every morning, the mile walk back. And we we're talking about this today, how beautiful our life is. Lots of adversity, of course, but how beautiful it is. Um, the Bible, the, the Catholic Church teaches that the man of virtue, a man of virtue lives a life of ease. Now, that doesn't mean it's easy. It just means the clutter and the confusion of being fractured in our soul, of pursuing this and dropping the ball and instead trying that and trying everything in the world to fill the emptiness in our heart uh, except for um, uh, what God has for us. When you, when you try to fill an emptiness in your heart with more emptiness, you just get more and more empty. But to pursue a life of virtue, as Aristotle said, is the, is the key to happiness. And, and, uh, and we know that God wants you to be happy. Why would he make you to have a dull drum life? If you're not having a Rocky Balboa life where you're facing adversity and overcoming challenges, how boring can it get? Uh, yes, we all have our, our challenges in our life, but we should take on bigger, we should take on challenges in our life. Uh, my dad used to say that success is the progressive realization of worthwhile predetermined goals. He was a professional speaker. Uh, success is only mentioned twice in Scripture. It's a mess message, I believe, in Joshua 1 and in Psalm 1. And it basically says if you meditate on God's Word day and night, 
success will attend all that you do. A success, my dad would say, is a progressive realization. It's a journey. It's not the minute you accomplish a goal and stop, you're no longer moving forward. You're, you're a failure. But to pick, but, but to, he stressed to me, select goals that make you grow to become that goal. Every year I set a, a goal for myself physically. I set a goal to pedal my bicycle across the United States, paddle the treacherous 30-mile Molokai Channel between Molokai and Oahu, or maybe get my black belt or something like that, uh, surf in a world championship, something that makes where I've chosen adversity. Uh, to, to, to accomplish that goal, I had to grow into it. I had to be disciplined. I had to be prudent. I had to be master myself, and I had to move in fortitude. You can actually train in the virtues from the outside and choose adversity, but not just for the sake of adversity. Choose something that you, like King David said, my first degree black belt, uh, lead me to the cl- wall too high to climb and I will climb it. As King David said, by thee I can leap a wall, by thee I can crush a troop, by thee I can bend a bow of bronze. Choose by in prayerful meditation, choose worthwhile direction in your life. You don't have to live in the backwash of mediocrity. You can be used by God in a powerful way. People come out here from time to time, they just seem to show up like the tide brings them in come across them, begin, they're in Hawaii, they're re- recreating, but I said recreation is just the beginning of the recreation. You need to re- recreate, play, get your mind off things, but then go out to a reef uh, on a point of land someplace and ask God to write you a new life script. Every year I sit down with pen and paper with my one of my many leather journals, and I'll write, this is my script for this year. This is my attitude. This is the things I want to accomplish This is what is important in my life. Please do the Habakkuk life. Habakkuk said, write the vision down in letters big enough so the man who's reading it can run while he's reading. Be Rocky Balboa. Stop waiting for adversity to happen to you. Go out and seek the adventure God has for you. And I think one of the greatest adventures you can have is to help start a That Man Is You program in your parish. Can you imagine being in heaven and looking at having someone greet you there that said, I'm here because of you. I actually had a dream about this last night. I had a dream of a friend of mine, Dennis Gilcrease, who, uh, who's a cast member of Long Ride Home, tough, gnarly biker dude whose life has uh, just melted uh, in his love for Jesus. And in the dream, he, uh, he says this. He said, I'm here because of you. And of course not. It's because of the Holy Spirit. But wouldn't that be great if you could have such an effect on men that their children made it to heaven too? So that man as you program is a vital. It's probably the most successful men's program out there. Mark, tell us more about how what it what it takes to get to get a that man as you program started. Mark Hartfield, VP of Development of That Man as You. Yeah, and one of the things you said, Bear, I want to jump on too. It just strikes me as is so moving is when you're saying not just the man, but then his children. And I think uh, more than meets the eye with the fruitfulness of that man as you is that when a man's heart is transformed and and he starts this adventure that you're talking about and his heart turns from things of the world and sensual pleasure and dominion and work and and he leaves those things behind and his heart then turns towards his the lord and then his family um the whole family reaps the benefits of that when the father is present in a in a real spiritual way and and because of that the fruits become generational right that we, we're not going to see the fruits of this. I'm not going to see the fruits of that man as you uh, in my lifetime. Uh, it's it's going to be a generational thing. And so you're right. Um, if some man goes out there and does, like you said, go do something good for the church. And a lot of us, you know, sit around, especially these days, and talk about maybe all the things not right with the church uh, and maybe point fingers at, you know, people higher up that they we think they are the ones who control right. everything. Mark, this is awesome. <clears throat> right on the money. Go ahead. Preach yeah, it, no, but preach it. It's, 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 and all those, and some of those things may or may not be true, right? But we have to, uh, as the laity, step up as well. And, and the church is only going to be transformed through holiness. Uh, and it doesn't start with the Pope's holiness, it starts with our holiness, right? From the ground up, within our families, within our homes, within our own hearts. That's how the church is going to be rebuilt, um, is the domestic church, right? The JP2 said it. He, he said the future of the world 
and the church pass by way of the family. He didn't say by way of the hierarchy. He said by way of the family. And so um, bringing that man as you into your parish, um, bringing it to the hearts of these men, that is, that's part of, and, and the beautiful thing is you're forming community right there in your parish. It's something that's clear and tangible. Like we know how to reach men in parishes. That's what we've spent the last 14 years doing. And so we, we pass this on to, to the men. And, and I can't tell you how much everything, how you began this segment, how many men echo that. And they come back to us and grat- we're grateful for them. They're grateful for us. It's well, a beautiful I want partnership. You to, let's, do it. let's do something here. I want any man here that feels the least inclination to do something. I'm telling you, Mother Angelica cracks me up because I just get, she, I get giddy. I could just see her just giggling and laughing about conversations like this. You are listening to me and God is nudging you. I could maybe do that. No, you, you, you God, the Holy Spirit wants you to do this. And I want you to do me a favor, Mark. Uh, if, if, if some men do contact you because of this show, I would love to follow just one of them along the journey. That'd be great. From we meeting could absolutely you, do that. Meeting you, and uh, I don't know how yeah. exactly we would do that, but we'd kind of do an update, maybe get them on the show too. Because the people we have on our show are boots on the ground men. And we have, we have Dr. Craft and all those kind of guys too, but we got, right. uh, and, and, and Mark Hart, Hartfield, but we get, I like the men that are just boots on the ground doing the stuff. So um, let's, let's, let's find, uh, if someone contacts you, let's, uh, Let's find a, a, a one or two Absolutely. of them and just kind of kind of watch them go through because they're getting going now. They would have it up and running by the fall and and uh, let, let's track it. It would be really cool to do. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, so if if you're listening and you hear that and you call in, definitely let us know that you you heard about it from the the Bear Wozniak show and uh, we'll we'll do that. That'd be so cool. So we're talking with Mark Hartfield. He is the vice president of development and he actually helped us get one get a that man as you program started. Here in here in Hawaii, I think it was 2013 or something like that. And uh, so we have just a few. We have just about a minute left. Can you talk to that one person out there who is listening and says, "I want to, I want to surrender my life to Jesus right now." Um, there's nothing. There is no greater adventure. Um, it is uh, absolutely the best thing you could ever do. Um, and your life, it's a, it's a game changer. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there, there's, there is, there's nothing else. Uh, I mean, I can say it that definitively. Um, I can't imagine, uh, anything else even coming closer comparing and back to my own conversion story. I thought my life was good. I, I didn't, uh, particularly feel a lacking or a void per se until I felt how good it was. Amen. This was so good. And now as St. Paul said, I consider everything else as rubbish compared to, you know, knowing and having friendship with Christ. Um, and like that you is, said, I mean, every day is easy, but it, there's nothing else that even comes that close. That is so well said. You know, I, I, I used to hear people go, well, I was a drug addict and this and this, and then I found the Lord. Honestly, for me, I was living a life as virtuous as I possibly could before I gave my life to the Lord. I was about to give up on on that, but I was doing my, I didn't drink. I was I was in college. I didn't go to parties, uh, but, but I didn't know what I was missing until I found what I was mm-hmm. missing. So you don't have to be some destitute person to give your life to Jesus. If you're successful already, uh, believe me, God can do so much with that. But we got to go, Mark. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Fast. Go to deepadventure.com to find out more about the Bear Wozniak Adventure and go to paradisusdei.org. If you just Google That Man Is You, you'll find him. You'll find it. And, uh, and let Mark help you start a That Man Is You program like he helped us start, start them out here in Hawaii. Till next week, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha. Aloha. You've been listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Go to bearwozniak.com to get your free audio and other exciting content. Plus, you can pick up the Long Ride Home 10-episode DVD set, autographed copies of Bear's books, Long Ride Home shirts, tanks, coffee cups, and even motorcycle pins and patches. And find out how guys can sign up for Bear's Man Cave online Facebook group, all at bearwozniak.com. 